It is a delight to welcome back to Larry King Live a return visit. Now she is the first lady of the United <laughs> States. Michelle Obama, last time she was, uh, we weren't even a candidate. You I were. wasn't. I was just hanging out. <laughs> How you, do you like the job? I really do. It's I'm not paid. enjoying myself. It, it isn't, but it's paid in so many ways other than money. You know, I, I, I get to do what, you know, we talked about this when I was here before. If you, when you like people, uh, having a job where you get to interact with folks on a day to day basis and you get to do things that make a difference and uh, you know, I still control my own schedule to, to some extent, so it, it's not a bad gig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, this, this, the childhood obesity thing, why, why is this your priority? Yeah, well, you know, in, in the first year, I, I, I focused on a number of things that I will continue to focus on. Support for military spouses, national service, which is something I've already always cared about, but as you know, this year I planted this wonderful garden, uh, yep. the first ever White House garden, and that was to begin the conversation about uh, nutrition. And we engaged uh, local kids in the D.C. area in that effort uh, and got a feel for how they re react to a more substantive conversation. But uh, on a personal note, um, you know, I come to this issue as, as a mother. Um, you know, before coming to the White House, especially when uh, my husband was on the campaign trail, we were living the lives of average families, way too busy, um, rushing fast food. fast food, you know, desserts too much, probably not monitoring TV. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a pediatrician who worked in a uh, urban environment in the African American community, and he was tracking BMI, and he saw a little uptick. Uh, in the kids' BMI, and he kind of pulled me aside. Um, BMI mean a body mass index, which is you know a measure of sort of where people fall on on the weight scale. It's one of the first indicators. Um, it was getting alarming. It was getting to the point where he raised a red flag, and he probably was more cautious than than most people because what he had been seeing in his own practice. Um, How did you react? You know, I was shocked at first because. I didn't, I thought I was doing what I was supposed to do, um, and I hadn't noticed any changes in my, my kids. So it was a little bit shocking and a little disorienting because I, I wasn't sure what to do. Um, but I went home and it was kind of a wake-up call and we made some changes, even with busy schedules. And they were minor changes, but I thought, well, we have to do something, so. But did the kids go for it? You know, they did. They and that the was the, from you, fries? you know, because, well, it was uh, portion sizes. It was a few more cooked meals. Um, you know, we had no absolutes except no desserts during the week. Uh, took uh, took sugary drinks out of the lunch lunch boxes and put in water and had more milk. Um, had more fresh squeezed juices, things like that. We talked about processed foods and uh, you know, so they caught on pretty quickly once you know they understood the point of it all. And they became stricter monitors in our household than either me or their, their father. So you put the kids in the army. The, right, that's the, right. I want to touch some other bases, then come sure. back to this. Does he get down easy, your husband? You know, he doesn't get down easily. He gets uh, very focused, um, uh, very serious uh, when, it, when he's facing a challenge. But, you know, the thing about Barack is that he stays humble and keeps things in perspective. I mean, uh, the challenges that he faces or has faced over this year are not what irk him. It's, it's really, uh, you know, our inability to solve basic fundamental problems facing the American people, improving the jobless rate, um, getting people back to work, uh, ensuring that our kids are getting the absolute best education in the world that prepares them for the future, that we have health care, uh, that we're really pushing to fix our environment so that we have a, a world to live in. Uh, when he doesn't get those problems solved, that's what irks him. More with the First Lady of the United States. You like hearing that, huh? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sarah Palin is one of the president's biggest critics. We'll ask Michelle Obama about that next. What's your read on the former governor of Alaska? You know, I, you know, I don't have a read. I mean, I try not to uh, make uh, or, or set opinions about people that I haven't had any, you know, substantive interaction with. I mean, I know what you see on TV Does and it when you're in you the. Does when she criticizes? What you know, uh, democracy is about critique, um, uh, and the president is not immune to criticism. I think he's doing a phenomenal job. Um, 
you know, we have to think of where we were when he took office. Uh, we were on the brink, brink of a depression, uh, worse than anyone really ever imagined. And I don't think the country ever really knew how bad things were. Uh, and because of some important steps, quick thinking, smart, strategic thinking, we're not even talking about that. Um, we've got to do more uh, on jobs. We need to get health care done. Uh, there's a lot of work to be, to be done. And, and we need to do more to improve um, uh, the civility in Washington. And I think if, if there's a disappointment Barack wishes uh, that we had, we we've come but that we've come farther in in that effort is she a, is she a phenomenon to you uh again i mean i think she i, I think it's uh, wonderful to have strong female voices out there um but i don't know her what do you make it a tea party uh you know i i'm i'm focused on what's in front of me uh and right now that's ending childhood obesity in a generation getting this done um, and I think when you're staying focused on solutions, um, trying to bring uh, folks together, governors, mayors, and uh, doctors and educators and athletes together around an issue that has no political party, um, you know, has no uh, base in liberalism or, or conservatism, but it's about our kids and making sure they have the best life possible, then, you know, I, it's You're hard driven. for me to get distracted. But you have to think about other things. You read the papers, you watch the television, you, I mean, you're, you're very smart and very aware. I'm very smart, but I, I try to limit my intake to things that I can control. Um, because in this position, you know, it is my responsibility to work with all Americans. Um, and I want to stay focused on right. the work rather than, you know, other things. Other things. Does he counsel with you? We talk all the time. I mean, we talk as we've done our entire marriage. Um, but it's more everyday talk. It's, it's, you know, I try to make our home sort of a stress-free, work-free zone for him because it's necessary when he works above the store. Um, it's important to, that when he or I or our kids walk in the door of the residence that there's, you know, there's a release. Um, so our attention and conversation still focus mainly around our girls and our family, uh, our plans for the future. Uh, we do talk about health care. I want to know how its day is going. I'm, I'm a citizen concerned about this country, too. So, you know, checking the, the, the temperature uh, is important for me. Do poll numbers bother you? I mean, you're in that interesting influx of yours are up mm -hmm. and your husbands are down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that affect dinner? Uh, no, no. <laughs> No, it that was doesn't. Funny. Yeah, that was good. One. Good one. Um, no, I mean it's it's you know w when you've been on this path in a campaign, I mean you see how poll numbers they go up, they go down. You, sometimes you can pinpoint why, sometimes you can't. Um, I am uh, I'm I'm very flattered that uh, the American people today feel like I'm doing a good job in representing them, uh, and my husband is proud of that as well. So it doesn't cause any tension at the dinner table. Just <laughs> looking at him and observing him over these few years, does he ever get mad, mad? Oh, yeah. Angry, angry. Oh, absolutely. Um, Ticked but, off. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's human, you know. If you prick Never him, he'll bleed. It. You know, I think that his view is main, uh, maintaining a, a constructive approach. Um, you know, he's always about finding the solution. And he knows if you go too far... Uh, emotionally, uh, if you get too angry or you, if you become too complacent, sometimes you miss the answer uh, in between. Uh, and that's, uh, I think, one of the strengths uh, of him as a leader. You know, we, we talked about wanting um, a stable, uh, consistent leader. We have that in him. Uh, that doesn't mean he doesn't show emotion. It's just that um, he shows it at appropriate times. He'll come home. Uh, he'll talk to his cabinet. Uh, he'll, you know, he'll uh, converse with his advisors. There are appropriate times to show anger and frustration. Um, but the American people don't care about the president's anger or frustration. They want to. They want to know he's solving some problems. We know how important fatherhood is to him. Motherhood yes. is to you. I remember him telling me taking the kids to school was a mm -hmm. big priority to yeah. him. Yeah. 
yeah. hated campaigning when he had to be away from it. Mm -hmm. Can't take him to school now, right? Yeah, well, it's a big old hassle. So raising <laughs> kids in the White House, hard, right? It's different, um, but it's easier in so many ways. That? Well, you know, there are some things he can't do, um, but there are many things he can do. Um, he gets up every morning, he sees his kids before they leave, not something he did two years ago, uh, could do two, three years ago. Um, he comes home at a certain time, he can have dinner, he can uh, read to the kids at night, tuck them into bed. Um, we have much more quality time. We can't go out necessarily, but he still goes to the parent-teacher conferences. He still goes he to... He goes to the school? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he goes to every performance and play. Um, he goes to basketball games and soccer games. He can't go to every single one of them uh, because some, on Saturdays, oftentimes, he's working. Uh, but, you know, he is as involved as he's been. It's just, for example, he can't take the kids to school every day. Quite frankly, they don't want him to. They think his motorcade is a complete uh, embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like for them? Growing up, that's one of the Roseville kids told me years ago that it's, it's at best, it's strange <laughs> to grow up in that house. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think you know what you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be interested to see what they say when they're 20 and 30. But right now, they, they take it in stride. I mean, the White House is a strange place to live, but it's um, surprisingly pleasant uh, because the people who work there really care about every single family that comes through. They're uh, good with kids, and they try to adapt to their uh, idiosyncrasies and create uh, a sense of normalcy. Um, so that's what they feel. Uh, it's like living in a big hotel with a whole bunch of fun people that you can work with. But then when, when the doors close, it's, Do they it's have like play home. dates? They have play dates. Kids just, come over? A uh, friend just left the house because uh, it's a snow day. We're all snowed in, so they're <laughs> getting stir crazy and driving us nuts. Mm -hmm. um, had kids, some friends sleep over uh, night before last. They go over to other kids' homes. They do. They do. That's a problem for Secret Service, isn't it, when they go to other people? Secret Service is very accommodating. And we don't try not to talk too much about what they do, but, you know, But you the tell kids them they're going do, over Henry's house. The kids lead normal lives, and it's because of the Secret Service that Good they can. Hear. Yeah. Some more issues and more about childhood obesity with the First Lady after this. Probably the... <laughs> Biggest single problem hyphenated with health care is jobs, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned it briefly, so many people out of work. His critics say your husband should be doing more. Mm -hmm. He promised more. Mm -hmm. How do you react? Yes, until the unemployment numbers go down, I don't think my husband is satisfied. Um, and more is, is coming. Um, you know, a lot was st saved with the stimulus. And again, you know, it's, it's hard to tell people who are hurting that things could have been worse if we hadn't done what we'd done. Um, so, you know, there's no point in pointing back. There's a lot more to be done, and he's not going to be satisfied and he's, until he sees those unemployment figures go down. How's the relationship? It was so bitter, well, rather bitter in the campaign with Hillary when they were going at each other. Yeah, it seems so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are they doing now together? Uh, they're great. Hillary Clinton is an amazing Secretary of State. I mean, she would have been an amazing president. She uh, was an amazing attorney. She's a phenomenal professional, um, and she's uh, proven to be a tremendous asset uh, uh, in, in so many ways. So the relationship is, is, is strong. Um, they share the same views in terms of international uh, policy and approach. Um, and we're seeing the outcome of that on the international stage. I think, you know, uh, we can say um, pretty clearly that um, the United States, the, the view of this nation around the world has changed. Uh, people are enthusiastic about the potential. Things aren't perfect. Um, we're still a nation fighting two wars. But when we travel around the co country, the excitement and the possibility are palpable. Uh, and I think that's because of the president, but I think it's also because of our Secretary of State. How tough is it for you when a man or a woman is lost in battle? Oh, it's the hardest thing. You know, I think one of the hardest things that um, the president said he had to do this year was to greet uh, the caskets of fallen soldiers um, that evening um, to 
you know, mm -hmm. sit down with parents who've uh, buried their child. When we went to Fort Hood, you know, meeting with the oh. families of the survivors of, of that tragedy, I mean, you know. How do you train for that? You don't, you know. Uh, what helps me is that I, I see how strong they are, um, you know, just They how, help you. They help me. Uh, that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why the issue of military families is so important to me. Maybe it's selfish because they give me strength. Um, you know, and the same thing is true for the president. When we look around and you think of the minor um, irritations that go along with being the president. You think about the real sacrifice of, of our troops and you want to make sure that they have the resources uh, they need when they're in the battlefield and that they have the resources and support. Uh, when they come home and that their families are well taken care of. Um, and we have to work hard for that. That's, you know, uh, that's not just a given. We're back with Michelle Obama fighting obesity. How about image problem of children? Mm -hmm. They have a certain self-image. This could hurt them to hear mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like this, couldn't mm -hmm. it? Again, we discussed delicate right, balance. Right. We I tread get, water here. Well, you, and you have to continue to tread water. Um, uh, Approaching this, we have to look at it from a whole range of, of uh, pillars as we information to parents, uh, improving school lunches, um, uh, improving accessibility and affordability, which means eliminating food deserts, uh, areas in this country where there are no supermarkets so that uh, families do have access to food. And then the last important pillar is really physical education. And that tends to be one of the more important ones for me because if kids are able to raise their level of activity, it frees them up to not have to worry about, um, uh, you know, every little thing that they eat because their activity level, level tends to be that of a normal kid. Um, the President's Fitness Challenge is going to play an important role, uh, really modernizing that challenge to make sure that it just doesn't uh, focus on athleticism, which it has in the past, how many push-ups or sit-ups you can do. And not every kid is an athlete, uh, but you don't have to be an athlete to be physically fit. You just have to move. What are you asking Joe and Martha Citizen to do? Mm -hmm. A well, couple's watching tonight. they got two kids at home. What yeah, are you asking them to yeah. do? I'm saying, first of all, be cognizant. Um, you know, be honest. Look around and say, you know, are things where they should be? You know, are my kids good? Are they getting the level of, of physical activity? Are they eating right? Um, do they have the energy level? If the answers are no, um, talk to your pediatrician. Um, get a real uh, assessment of what's going on and then work with them to structure um, some solutions. And they can be pretty small, you know. I'd say turn off the TV. Um, eat dinner together as a family. There was a study that showed that um, structure in children's lives, whether they're eating uh, meals as a family on a regular basis, they have a regular bedtime, all that structure really decreases the, uh, uh, the likelihood that a child will be obese. You can make changes. Cut yeah. down portion sizes. And even if you're not in a safe neighborhood, find ways to be more active with your kids. And it could be turning on the radio and dancing until you sweat for uh, a half an hour. If you live on the top floor, walk up and down the stairs. Um, uh, mm. Walk to school if you can. Um, yeah. Find those small ways as a family to simple. get out. Yeah. You know, and that's what I would tell the average viewer. Simple. You know, it's not a whole scale change. A couple of quick things. Yes. It's just a few days to Valentine's. Yes. What do you expect? Roses? Chocolates? Oh, I both. expect the moon, the stars, and the sun, honey. What do you usually get? <laughs> I usually get dinner and a gift of some sort. You're uh, going to go out for Valentine's? I don't it's know. It's a Sunday. I don't know because we might be traveling. We might spend some time at Camp David. So if, but I'm not sure yet. We haven't finalized the plan. Does he get a gift, by the way? Uh, a nice card. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama.